Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, May 12, 2020. You have joined the Committee on the Urban Redevelopment and Renewal and Planning. If you have joined the roll meeting, now it's time for you to get off. Madam, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Present. Vice Chairman Narducci is absent. Councilman Correa. Present. Councilman Castillo is absent. Councilman Espinal. Present. You have three present and two absent. You do have a quorum. Thank you very much. At this time, uh, because of the type of meeting that we are having, before the public, I would ask that the city solicitor please give our committee a finding, please, on the legality of this meeting. Madam Chair, I don't believe the solicitor has joined the meeting yet. May I ask uh, the clerk? Yes, while well, we're under the uh, governor's executive order, she has allowed us to hold meetings uh, electronically and telephonically. Thank you so much. Tonight, uh, as you know, we will be talking and entertaining the uh, CARE Act, what they call the CARE Act. It's a stimulus package that has to get out into our neighborhoods. So tonight, uh, we Matt. are going to go into what we call a public hearing. Madam Clerk, please read the first item on the uh, docket. Ma Public Madam hearing. Chair, if I may. Yes, sir. Madam Chair, if I may, Council President Pro Temp. Yes, Council President Pro Temp. I have a question for the clerk. Um, Madam. Yes. Uh, Tina. Yes. Can is it okay if that we proceed uh, without the representation from the law department at this time? They were sent an invite. Uh, if I can try to um, get in touch with the solicitor, if you want to hold a moment and see if the uh, solicitor will be joining the meeting. At this time, Madam, Madam Clerk, I would like to take the suggestion of uh, Pro Temp uh, uh, Career and just go ahead and stand until we have Madam, uh, Felissa join us. Madam, Madam Chair, at this time, I make a motion to stand at, at ease. I, a motion has been made to stand at ease by Pro Temp Career. Is second. there a second? second? Second by Councilman Espinal. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pro Tem. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Tina, you're going to try to get in contact with somebody? Yes. Give me a moment. Thanks. I will. Re Might as well go back to the finance meet. Madam Chair, this is Erlen. Yes, sir. I've made contact with the city solicitor affiliate and they're jumping on the Zoom call right now. Okay, we'll wait for them. Thank you, Erlen. Thank you, Erlen. You're welcome, committee members. Thank you. 
Can you hear me? Yes, you, we could hear you. Okay, sorry I'm late. I was in the middle of something and lost track of time. Um, at this time, um, um, I'm gonna ask the pro temp, how do I proceed after standing? Um, you can I just make a say we're back to... on the record. Yep. Say that again. Just, you can let everyone know we're back on the record. At this time, we're back on the record. At, um, we have heard the reading of the legality of this uh, meeting from my clerk. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please proceed with item one on the docket? Public hearing on substantial amendment to the 2019-2020 Annual Action Plan for CARES Act activities. As many of you know, we don't usually do the public hearing. This is usually done by the planning department. This is an emergency to get this funding into our neighborhood and into our community. But this time, we're gonna open it up for the public hearing. Madam Clerk, is there anyone uh, stand on standby to speak? So if everyone can hear me that is an attendee, uh, I will unmute you one at a time and ask if you're here to provide public testimony or if you're just listening into the meeting and we'll proceed that way. So I will start at the top of the list. And I will say um, phone number ending in 789. Are you here to give public testimony? Or are you just here to um, attend the meeting? Attend the meeting. Thank you. Uh, Mr. or Mrs. Katana, are you here to provide public testimony or just attend the meeting? Uh, I'm here from Dorcas International to provide testimony. Okay, please state your name, title, and organization for the record and then proceed. My name is Abir Katana, A-B-E-E-R. Um, I'm the Development and Grants Manager at Dorcas International Institute of Rhode Island. And I'm Thank here you. to speak on behalf of our CDBG COVID-19 specific uh, grant application. So well, thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, so we requested CDBG um, COVID-19 specific funding to support the services created and expanded in response to COVID-19. A bit of, a bit of um, background on our organization for people who don't know. We are the only refugee resettlement agency in Rhode Island. Um, we also work with unaccompanied youth, um, immigrants, low-income Rhode Islanders to provide just all the services and supports they need to create a sustainable life in the United States and Rhode Island specifically. Our clients are some of the most vulnerable members of our community. And they're often the people that fall through the cracks when crises happen. Um, we're already seeing it now with the pandemic. Um, oftentimes people say when talking about COVID-19 that it sees no race or gender or class, but we know when looking at the impacts on marginalized populations that that's not always the case. Most of our clients are low income without health insurance, they have unstable housing, and they greatly rely on our programs and services. The majority of them work hourly, part-time, or temporary positions in the service industry and have been laid off in the midst of this crisis. They don't have safety nets. Um, loss of income right now will have long-term negative impacts on their and their families' lives. 
Many clients were already struggling before COVID-19 and now with school and business closures, loss of jobs, many of our clients are struggling to even meet their basic needs. And loss of stability now will have far reaching effects on every part of their and their communities, physical, emotional, and mental well-beings. Without our support in this time, many of our clients will be entrenched further in a vicious cycle of poverty that will affect generations to come. So in response to COVID-19 and the, identif the needs that we've identified with our, in our client populations, we have created several different services and programs. We have been employing our community health workers who are themselves newcomers, um, whether it's refugees or immigrants, and we've employed, we're employing them to help educate people on COVID-19 um, in a linguistically and culturally appropriate manner without the substantial role that they've been playing in educating newcomers about the current pandemic outbreak. Um, various refugee and newcomer populations would continue falling through the cracks. They don't have access to the necessary information and um, or translated information that's, that they need to protect themselves in this time. Um, in collaboration with the City of Providence and Brown University, we've been coordinating, coordinating food delivery to clients and needs. We've created a COVID-19 relief response team to assist clients associated with our programs to access housing assistance in order to prevent eviction homelessness. There are a lot of federal and state funds available, but many of our clients don't qualify for them, whether it's due to being undocumented or whatever the case may be, and we are doing our best to support them in this time of need. With this grant funding, we're also looking to hire a social worker, worker to provide, again, culturally and linguistically appropriate and sensitive behavioral health supports to our clients. Many of them come from extremely traumatic backgrounds. And this pandemic, and this pandemic seems to be affecting them inordinately. Refugees and immigrants, both documented and not, are affected by COVID, are especially affected by this crisis. Many of them have come from situations and areas in the world where they've experienced extreme instability, isolation, and uncertainty. They've been separated from family and now they're being facing uncertainty again, needing feeling the need to start over once again. Nearly all of them have experienced great tra trauma already in their life. And this cr crisis has the potential to re-traumatize already vulnerable individuals and families. We play a vital role in providing education and supports to newcomers. And we've also, I mean, to be completely frank, we've also lost a lot of funds in this pandemic. And we asked for 400,000. Um, I think we've been earmarked for less, but every penny counts. And to be able to provide the life-saving services that we do, we need all the support that we can get. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, I'm going to um, stand and allow you to um, check the next person to speak, please. Yeah. Brenda Clement, are you here to give testimony or just to join the meeting? I'm here to give testimony, uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, please state your name, organization, and title for the record and then proceed. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brenda Clement, uh, and I'm director of Housing Works Rhode Island at Roger Williams University. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to come uh, and comment. Um, as you may uh, have, as you well know, I'm sure from your constituents, uh, this pandemic has only uh, added uh, more fuel to the fire around our affordability problems and crises in the city around housing, um, housing instability and housing costs were a big problem uh, even before um, the, uh, the COVID incidents, but now are going to continue to grow worse um, as time goes on. Um, Emily Freeman, who I know is on the call, has been joining our regular calls um, uh, with the housing community and providing important updates to us. Um, but I would just urge as we continue to identify resources that we continue to look at rental assistance. We were very pleased to have the um, mayor include in his budget 
um, a, some funding and money for a right to counsel uh, an eviction defense project uh, that we're working with some of our colleagues on now to submit a proposal for that. But in order for the legal assistance is a key piece of eviction defense, but also having funding and money um, that we can uh, provide uh, to landlords in negotiation um, and that we can provide for tenants to be able to stay in rental units is critical. Um, so I urge um, you to consider that when uh, you're looking at how to use these resources and uh, how to um, coordinate them with some of the other state resources. I would note that the, the state rental program that the governor announced a couple of weeks ago um, uh, was uh, within a couple of hours of being announced had about 1200 applicants uh, they currently now have about 3000 applicants and only funding and money to help 300 people so we know that the demand is going to continue to grow and continue to get worse. Um, and so I urge you all also to encourage the governor's office to use some of the state funding and money in addition to CDBG funding and money um, to uh, rental assistance and housing assistance programs as well. Um, and again, as always, happy to continue to work with the council and, and uh, the planning department um, on housing programs and indicators as we move forward. I'd also encourage us, and again, and Emily may be able to provide some guidance. I'm not sure if this pot of money can be used for these purposes, but part of our discussion with, this, uh, with the governor's office around the state pot is to try to use some of this money to acquire properties uh, as well to ASAP so that when uh, hotel vouchers are ending for clients from Crossroads and uh, Amos House that, and other um, shelter providers in the state that we do not have to move these people back to congregate living settings, that we can actually move them into some housing units and permanent housing units, even if they're not the final place where they will land. Um, in my opinion, you know, moving these, we move them into hotels because they were at risk for the virus. None of that has changed just because those FEMA payments will end um, at the end of May uh, at this point in time, unless we can convince FEMA to extend it even more. So again, this may be beyond the, the particular questions of this um, or, or use of this proposed funding and the amendments before you today, but just wanted to raise these larger issues too, so that you can keep those in mind as you make your decisions. Thank you so much. Thank Madam you. Chair, I proceed. Madam Clerk. H. Khan, are you here to provide public testimony or are you just here to join the meeting? I'm just here to join the meeting, thank you. Thank you so much. Kevin Pannone, are you here to provide public testimony or are you just here to join the meeting? Just for the meeting. Thank you, sir. Mike Chia, are you here to give, provide public testimony or just to join the meeting? Um, I would like to add what uh, Ms. Abir mentioned. I am from the same organization, Dorcas International. Um, okay. Can you please state your name and title for the record, sir? Mike Che. I am the director of Pinpoint Translation. Thank you. Please proceed. In addition to what Ms. Abir mentioned, um, Dorcas International um, and Pinpoint have also provided um, services to the community that have been uh, has been affected by this uh, COVID-19. What we have uh, done in addition to what Ms. Uh, Abir mentioned is that we have been providing um, free translation services to local nonprofit, um, anything related to COVID-19. Um, so they are, uh, they can be informed of what is um, going on. Uh, and in addition to that, Dorcas International has also uh, launched a hotline to support their, um, their clients tell, um, that attend the um, education um, through Dorcas International to support them in their distant learning um, when, in, when, they are, when they are in need of technical support um, to help continue their uh, educations. Um, and that is it, unless Kevin Pannoni would like to add anything. 
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Madam Chair, if I may, so he was speaking in support of Dorcas International? I would assume that's what he was doing. I think he also mentioned his own organization, which has been supported of Dorcas as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. I will move, proceed. Peter Aysen, are you here to give testimony or are you just joining the meeting? Uh, just joining the meeting, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Stephen Hug, are you here to provide public testimony or just to join the meeting? Just to join the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hug. Madam Chair, I see no, uh, one moment. Mr. Pannone, you'd like to provide some testimony? Uh, just clarification for the committee regarding Pinpoint and Dorcas International. Uh, okay, please state, please state your name and title and organization for the record. My name is Kevin Pannone. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Dorcas International Institute of Rhode Island. Please proceed. So there was a question earlier about um, Mike Shea's uh, advocacy of Dorcas. Um, Pinpoint, um, translation and interpretative services is a part of Dorcas International Institute of Rhode Island. So they're, they're, they work with us and they provide uh, translation and interpretive services to our clients and others throughout the state. Thank you, sir, for that clarification. Um, pro temp, um, did you- Yes, thank you for that clarification, thank you. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, I see no other attendees to provide testimony. Okay. At this time, I would um, even allow our uh, committee, if there is anything burning, to um, at this time say or contribute to this uh, uh, budget. I have nothing, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. Councilman Espinal. I do not, but I uh, just in general, I'd like to say that I'm very well familiar with the work of uh, Dorcas International and the work they do in the community and the, uh, especially for the refugees coming in. Uh, for many, many years, I have dealt with them and I can attest of their great uh, community involvement and their great efforts uh, to make sure that uh, when the refugees come in, uh, they, they have a, a place to live that is safe, that is affordable, and that they actually uh, put in a path of, of uh, self-fulfillment and, and a path of success through education and to make sure that their family be uh, being provided with what they need. Uh, so it's a great organization. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Espinal. At this time, we're going to ask the clerk to please read item two into the record. In ordinance adopting the Clearance Act Grant budget and authorizing the Department of Planning and Development to submit the CDBG, CBESG, CBESG, CB, and HAPWA CB budget and applications to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. At this time, I would call for a motion from the floor that we pass this budget. May Madam I have Chair, a motion? This time, Madam Chair, at this time, I make a motion to uh, pass the, uh, the uh, CDBG uh, uh, COBRA Relief uh, Economic Security Act uh, uh, that's before us. Now, one thing I failed to do, and, and this is an error, and also I have to apologize for my newness in my position. I failed to allow Emily, who is a part of the planning department, and the motion is on the floor, so we're going to hold that motion for a second. But I would like for Emily at this time to talk about this CARE Act and to talk about how it is, how important it is, and how it came about that we ended up in our committee, please. 
Madam Chair, if I may, uh, Councilman Espinal, I think the motion has to be second, and then we we'll open up for discussion, and that's when Emily can actually uh, do her presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and second uh, pro temp's uh, motion. Okay, and, uh, thank you. All right, you. I'll take that. And um, we have the motion has been made by pro temp Correa, second by Councilman Espinal. At this time, we're going to open it up for discussion, and I'm, I'm doing a little backwards, but we're going to open up for discussion from Emily. Yes. But we are in a position to make that vote. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Emily Friedman, Director of Housing and Community Development for the city. Um, good evening, committee members. Good evening, members of the public who have joined us. Um, I'm pleased to join you this evening to discuss the CARES Act ordinance that has been proposed that appropriate federal funds the city anticipates receiving as a result of the recent passage of the Federal CARES Act, the recent stimulus bill. These funds have been provided to us by the federal government and thanks, many thanks to our congressional delegation in order to respond specifically to the novel coronavirus. These funds are going to be flowing through our existing HUD program. So we're receiving stimulus funding under the Community Development Block Grant Program Emergency Solutions Grant Program, as well as the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS Hopper Program. Through these funds, we are permitted to fund new or quantifiable increases in the level of direct service um, that's provided by our frontline organizations in order to prepare for, respond to, or recover from the coronavirus. I should note that we received a tremendous level of requests from a number of wonderful organizations. In total, we received over $12 million in ask for about $2.5 million to give out, which speaks to the incredible need in our community right now. The applicants that were responsive um, submitted discrete disaster proposals um, with either a, anywhere between a three to 24 month timeline. So again, designed to provide short-term, mid-term and long-term relief. Sadly, these funds are not going to be renewed, so we do need to be able to make sure that these investments count. Uh, given the amount of ask that we received, we did work in partnership across the administration and council to look for opportunities for any consolidation or creation of partnerships to avoid duplication of service and try to make sure that all needs in our community were going to be covered. Generally, proposals funded fell within three major buckets, which was healthcare, food, and housing. Prioritization was given to activities that are serving our most vulnerable and communities that are most at risk or impacted by COVID-19. So next steps would be that we would pass this budget for, uh, out of committee and then by the council twice. We would finalize the required substantial amendments for our annual action plan that allows us to appropriate these funds. We are, will incorporate any public comments received and submit this proposed budget to HUD for approval. Our goal is to get these funds out into the community as soon as June 1st. Thank you. And certainly if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Is there any questions? Uh, yes, uh, Emily, thank you. Uh, Councilman Espinal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Emily, so uh, you said $12 million that were asked and obviously we don't have that amount to put out. So there are a number of uh, great, excellent uh, organizations that do an excellent work that are not gonna get funded. Uh, no, what's the process for that? Will you be sending them a letter and an explanation of, of what do we do? I mean, a lot of this organization, it, it's, they do deserve it, but unfortunately we don't have enough. Absolutely. Uh, what we'll likely do is typically we, we will provide award letters to the organizations who are funded in this first tranche of money. For those that were reviewed and found to be eligible um, and a priority for funding, what we can do is essentially let them know that we will hold their application aside for if and when additional stimulus funds become available. We have heard through the CARES Act that this potentially additional tranches of funds might become available. And so we wouldn't ask these organizations to reapply. We can simply hold their applications aside 
and if we have to issue an additional RFP, give them further reconsideration. Um, and then the organizations, unfortunately, that were found to not be eligible will get a rejection letter. And certainly, I'm happy to work with any organization to get them primed to reapply in the future, whether it's through stimulus funding or through our regular CDBG process uh, next winter. Yeah, sounds like a fair plan. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you. Any further questions for Emily? At this time, we have taken uh, the motion that was made by Councilman Correa, I mean, I'm sorry, Pro Temp Correa, and second by Councilman Espinal. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Is there any opposition? No opposition, the ayes have it. The motion have passed. Thank you. And before we end this meeting, before I take a, um, I would like to take a moment to say that this has been one of the most uh, difficult process for both, not only myself, but my committee as well. We are so used to dealing with each other uh, personally, but I wanna thank the clerk's office for being so on point with our information and making sure that we had this information in front of us. I wanna thank Emily for patiently working with us and um, mediating back and forth between administration and council. Thank you so very much. Most of all, I wanna thank Councilman Narducci, who is a, um, um, also a leader in uh, the ERP committee and have been for a while and has been very supportive in how we uh, move this fund through the community. I wanna thank everyone, because this is very important to our community. Mostly, I wanna thank the entire committee because they were available for calls, calling, questioning, and the committee have worked very hard. So I got to say, if this committee would not have performed the way it would, we would not be where we are tonight. So we wanna, I want to thank you personally, committee, for your investment in what we had to do in order to get the response to our community. Thank you. Now, at this point, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion has been made by Councilman Pro Temp. Uh, to adjourn and second by Councilman Espinon. You all be safe and send you all virtual hugs. Take care. All of them favor. Thank you. Me too. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.